at Ford Girls School of Music in London. And it is my pleasure this morning slash afternoon slash evening, we might have people from Europe here, um, to introduce um, my friend Derek Chu. Derek is in Calgary. He is a member of the College of Examiners with the Royal Conservatory of Music. And he has a master's in piano from the Manhattan School of Music. And uh, with that, I would like to introduce Natalia Pardalis. Hey everybody, my name is Natalia. Like, like Jennifer said, I'm Natalia Pardalis. I'm located in Surrey, British Columbia. I own Pardalis Studio for Music and Performing Arts. Uh, I have my uh, Bachelor of Arts from Trinity Western and a Bachelor of Performing Arts from Kapolei University. And I'm currently working towards a master's in vocal pedagogy. So yeah, I'm really excited to be part of this. <laughs> Thank you, Derek, for doing this too. Awesome. My pleasure. Um, just before we begin, um, we're going to leave about five minutes at the end um, for question and answer. And just like school, you have to raise your hand. Um, and there is a button on Zoom to raise your hand. So um, please keep your audio muted until the last five minutes of question and answer. So again, please keep your audio muted. And um, Derek, take it away. Sure, thanks uh, Jennifer and Natalia for having me. Um, yeah, this is different times for sure for everybody. And I know everyone's adjusting to online teaching, uh, but we're none of us are unfamiliar with being online because we're, we're here every day checking our emails, reading news. Personally, I'm here checking sports scores and watching basketball highlights because <clears throat> I'm teaching and I don't have time to actually watch the game. So um, Zoom is a wonderful way that I can connect with my students. I've been using Zoom uh, for, for years now because when I'm on the road examining, I still need to keep in touch with my students and hear them practice, see how they're doing their progress. So I've been doing a lot of online teaching and Jennifer invited me to speak for the teachers today. And I just want to uh, thank you all for joining us. I'm gonna just show you some of the the benefits of using Zoom and other online tools for teaching. And uh, just bear with me a second as I share a screen with you. And you'll see here, I've <clears throat> put a little slide, a little show together, and um, I'm using a program called Canva. Uh, you could use PowerPoint, I use Canva because everything's online and actually gives me a little bit more interesting usage of graphics. Um, unfortunately, I'm not using a ton of graphics today, but we are going to talk about teaching music online. This is where you can find me on Instagram, my handle, and there's my email there. And if you're, you have questions that you'd like to have answered about online teaching, feel free to send me an email there. Okay, so we're going to cover why we teach online, how we can message to students and parents, how to utilize Zoom, and some studio tips during COVID-19. One of the real benefits of this program of Zoom and the screen sharing is that you're able to screenshot or save any of the slides I'm presenting here. So you don't have to write down notes unless you want to. Um, for those on an iPad, <clears throat> All you have to do is if you go to the, you can just quickly do a screenshot. So the power up button, sorry, the power button and the volume up works. On PC, if you scroll at the top of the Zoom window, you'll see um, it says annotate. And if you hit annotate, there'll be a save button over to your right. So you can save that screen as well. I use this a lot with my students. Okay. So some interesting Things here about students saying their digital learning improves grades, helps them to be more prepared, and then makes their studying more efficient. I know there's a lot of parents that may be hesitant about utilizing online lessons or even online technology to learn something like theory or music history. Fortunately, we do have stats, we have scientific research that proves, and this is done by McGraw-Hill Education, that utilizing tools online is going to enrich a student's learning experience. The next slide here, it talks about how students retain new concepts utilizing digital learning technologies. 
This is a huge percentage here. 94% of students have said this. And finally, 60% of students say digital learning technology has improved their grades. One of the reasons for this is that they're much more engaged. It gives them an opportunity to learn their topics or learn their subjects in a different way. And some students just do better online. They're not great readers and there's a lot of interactive activities um, that are designed for students of studying all sorts of topics out there, whether it's music or English or even cooking. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the Masterclass website where you can take a Masterclass with Gordon Ramsay and learn how to uh, make the perfect batch of scrambled eggs. I learned that myself when I watched the video. So for me, what I've said to my students in the past about online learning is that I've always emphasized the positive learning experience of online education. I've never brought up that it's negative. I don't talk about the challenges and how it's different than what it is in in-studio lesson because those are the things that they'll be very apprehensive about. They're only familiar with what we do in the studio. And I think a lot of what we also have to do now is educate and show them how going online can be very beneficial for their children. One of the things I think is that it's really exciting. It brings new ways of teaching. I have my iPad here and I'm using all sorts of apps, especially the RCM theory apps, and it's a quick way to show my students how to do some intervals and do some chords. I'll demonstrate that in a second. For me, right now, it maintains a sense of normalcy, routine, and schedule. All of our students across the country and in the United States, they've lost their schedule. They've lost their routine. They're not in school anymore. They don't do their basketball or their hockey or their gymnastics or the ballet. And the one thing they can continue to do is their music lessons. We are the one person that they can continue to spend time with once a week or maybe twice a week or however many times they wanna see you and continue to learn and grow musically. Those goals that you set out for your students or with your students back in September, you can still reach them now. And I think it's really important that we state that to the parents that our sense of normalcy is still gonna be here. And because of that, we can continue to reach those goals. I always say e-learning allows for new and creative ways to teach. And I'll demonstrate a couple of those in a moment. The one thing I always noticed is that students became more accountable and responsible for their learning. And this is how I knew, because every time I was teaching online, the students would come right up to the screen and stare right at the screen and listen and watch me as I taught. That's not always the truth, you know, what's happening inside the studio. Sometimes they're just staring at the music while you're giving them instructions or demonstrating. But it becomes a much different thing when they look at the screen and I guess make eye contact as best as they can with you. And a lot of times, because there are, there could be, there may be a lag at times, they're not interrupting you. They're really listening and waiting for that space and then they'll respond. And I've also found because I'm teaching online, if I've given them some instructions, if they're unsure, they ask me, they ask for clarity. We should never fear a new experience. New experiences are, are exciting. It gives us a chance to do something creative. And now the parents can be deeper engaged in a child's learning. I'm sure many of you have students who are dropped off. They come to your studio and the parents run off to uh, Costco or they're dropping another kid off at the violin lesson. Well, part of it is for some students, they're gonna need their parents to help set it up, set up the gear. Some parents will have to do the screenshot and the saving for their kids for the lesson notes. And I noticed this in the other day, I was teaching one of my students and he had the iPad on the computer, but in the back I saw that they had the, I, the Apple TV streaming the lesson so the parents could watch from the coffee table. So I found that parents are gonna be much more engaged here. I think it's also important to say this is a temporary model of learning. This isn't something that's going to be permanent because we are gonna get out of this crisis. But it's, a, it's good because let's say you have that student down the road 
who's sick in November, but they don't want to miss their lesson, but they can't leave the home. So now you have a model that can be utilized down the road to continue those lessons. And I've heard, I've seen this quite a bit. I think it's really important that we do not change our fee structure when it comes to online learning. We should not take a discount because we're online. All of you teachers are qualified. You've submitted students for exams and for festivals and you've prepared them. And your knowledge is what they're paying you for. The knowledge, the experience, what you're teaching them. So it's vital to not change your fee structure. It's still your time. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about Zoom. You can use it on your phone. You can use it on your tablets and your computer. Here's the website. Um, if you're going on your phone or tablet, it's on your app store. The thing is that you guys already know that because you're all here. You found the link, you clicked it, and you're on one of your devices. Now, do you need a microphone or a speaker, headset, extra web cameras? No, but it does enhance it on both ends. Now, we can't expect, we cannot, sorry, expect our students to go out there and buy the best microphones and the best speakers and the best cameras. So working with what they have is gonna suffice. My experience is that iPads and Apple devices have excellent microphones and the sound picks up really, really clearly. So that's what I use but you can enhance it. So one of the things I actually do is I have my computer and it's streamed onto my big screen and the sound is coming out of my home audio system. So I'm getting a really good quality sound. Now you could do that too, if you have your home system uh, hooked up and you know how to stream. And if you're not sure, you can ask me and I can help you with that later. And because it's hooked up to my home audio, I can also adjust the levels. I can bring the bass down, I can bring the treble up, all sorts of things so that I can really hear the sound in the clearest way. This is just a few setups I've seen online. Now I'm gonna use the annotation tool here just to draw a couple of things this one is actually from a colleague of mine, this uh, one on your top left-hand corner. You can see that there's the camera right here, sorry, the computer's right here. She has a microphone hanging. She's got a screen here where she can watch her student. And if you look really, really carefully right here, she has a little Bluetooth speaker to amplify the sound. So you could hook your Bluetooth speaker up to zoom and her camera is probably right uh right here and also right here and the students can see the screen and i also noticed she's got all of her books ready to go so i think that's an important thing that when we're teaching that all of our repertoire all the books that we're going to use with our students are right there i see right here at the top of the here's, here's a celebrate celebration series level one in her oak conservatory sitting up in the corner here's another one this is a basic setup, the top middle, with just the iPhone pointing down on the keyboard. I find this interesting because there's a stand here and it's covering F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. So um, I'm suspecting that the teacher in this case is teaching some elementary students and is not utilizing some of those upper keys. Over here, there's a camera and microphone just in the top right hand corner. There's also a web camera right here. And the teacher has a, has a headset as well. Um, this one on the bottom left hand is a very elaborate setup with camera on to the left, iPad camera on the right, and then iPad in the middle. So this is a very elaborate setup. Again, you, you can go as elaborate as you like. You can have as much fun as you want too. Here's a real basic one here with just the, um, the MacBook sitting on a music stand pointed at the keyboard with a web camera on top. And this final one, uh, you can or cannot have the dog, it's completely optional. And there's a microphone, there's a music stand here and there's a boom, I forgot to put the uh, clip it up there, but there's a boom with a camera pointing down. So all sorts of little creative ways that we can do this. Bear with me 
me a second. Okay. So I want to highlight some of the, the really exciting things that we can use with Zoom. So there's the whiteboard. And I'm going to go over to the whiteboard now. Just give me one second. I'm going to leave this, this um, slideshow for one moment while I go over to the whiteboard. Now I'm here on the whiteboard. This is where I use, I put all my students' lesson notes. So I will write down today is 24. This is no different than what I would do with their notebook at their lessons. I can quickly scribe. Now what I'm using is a tablet and I'm using the stylus. You don't have to use the stylus if you don't have one. If you don't have a touch screen, that's okay. Because when you annotate, you can also do text. The writing, typing in. Practice notes from my student like that. At the same time, what I can do is I can do a little bit of rhythm with them. I can put no different than in their notebook. I can write down rhythms for them to practice at home. Something like that. So that's a great use of the whiteboard. Now again, they can screenshot this whiteboard or under the annotate menu, they can save it. And then it will save as a picture file on their tablet or their computer, and then they can pull it up. Obviously I save it too, because this is my record of what I taught my student that week. Um, that's what our notebooks are for. I can always look at the physical notebook when they come for the lesson, but because they're not coming for the lesson, I still need something. And so uh, I just screenshot all of these. Now, what's nice is in Zoom, when you do screenshot items, it will then put it in a folder and it'll organize it by the meeting date and time and the person you're having a meeting with. So it's really easy for you to organize everything. Okay, I'm just gonna close this. And I'm gonna share something else with you that's really fun. Where all the settings are running out. So let's say you wanted a student to hear a recording or see a recording. As you can see right now, I have YouTube opened up. Is a good buddy of mine, Stuart Goodyear. And uh, here's some fun little music. It's a few that he wrote on the baby shark theme. And what I've done is that I've set it up so that the sound from this recording is gonna show up on your speaker. It's gonna be playing through your device's speaker. So let's just take a quick listen to Stuart here. <laughs> I hope you guys like that piece. Pretty cool, hey? And um, I know Elaine Rust from the Royal Conservatory is online with us now. Perhaps Elaine can get this into the syllabus 
um, for the next piano syllabus. I think it would be great personally to hear that piece on exams uh, coming up. So that's a really, really cool thing to do is um, to showcase videos. Now, let me just pop back into my screen here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my iPad with you. Okay, so you can all see my iPad here. And I have all these uh, RCM apps I use with my students on here. So for instance, if I wanna work with my students on perhaps writing some intervals, I could show them online, okay. Now I'm gonna clear this because this is the one I did last night with one of my students. Here, it says major, minor, perfect intervals, picker, select your answer from the picker below. So they can see that it's a G and a C and I can ask them, can you play that on the piano for me? Or I could play it for them. We can talk about how many semitones it is from G coming down to C or C going up to G. Uh, we can talk about the distance. And then they can tell me what it is, and I can just scroll it up and put the answer in for them. Okay, so now I'll move on to the next one. And same thing here, we can talk about this one. I would ask them, is this a harmonic or is this a melodic interval? You see, I could do these things in class, but I can also do it now online. I, I don't have to be... Uh, limited with what I'm teaching. I can still do a lot of the things that I would do physically in class virtually over Zoom here. So again, we would talk about whether this is harmonic or melodic. I would play it for them. We can talk again about the distance and how many semitones it makes this. And hopefully you're telling me it's a perfect octave. Now, what's really nice is that Sometimes I'm teaching and I'm in a hotel room and I don't have a keyboard. This RCM app is fantastic because it does have a keyboard. And so I can show them the keyboard. And you can hear the sound coming out on your end. So I can double check those things with my students as well using Zoom. Okay, so that's intervals. I can go into The melody writing and work on this with them as well. Now, here for composing a melody, I would ask my students, okay, now you see all, you can see the, um, the phrase here, the question phrase. Could you play it at the piano for me so we can hear it? And then we're gonna write the answering phrase here. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna position the different cells on there. And I'll say to my student, okay, this is number one. The first one is number one. Oh, here, sorry. This is number one, this is number two, this is cell number three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I would ask them to play each one of those cells at the piano. And then we would work on creating this phrase. And I would ask them what key we're in and what would be a really good ending measure. And hopefully they would be able to say, three works really well. So I would just drag up number three over there for them. And so forth. And we can go through many of these exercises in this exact same way. So again, I do this in-house in my studio and I can do it online with Zoom and 
not miss a beat in any of our lessons or any of the subjects that we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna close that. Now, you can also utilize your iPad or your iPhone as a second camera. And I'm gonna do that right now for you. So when you're demonstrating, you want to show your students some scales. This, or you want them to hear something, you can do it this way. So now they can still see me, but they can see my fingers at the piano. And then I can demonstrate, I can play something for them. And I could talk to them about keeping my hand a certain position, perhaps a fingering here. Holding the F sharp and sliding my hand under. So again, everything I'm doing in the lesson, everything I'm doing in-house, they're going to be able to see now me speaking, but then with the, uh, the iPad as a second camera. You can also set up a web camera as your second camera. Um, I like a web, sorry, I like using my iPad because it's wireless. I, I don't like having a ton of cables lying around. And uh, so if you use, do have a webcam, um, it creates a few more cables lying around. So if you do have an iPad or an iPhone laying around, that could be very beneficial for you. So just a, a little uh, hack that they, the Zoom allows you to do. Okay, here's another thing that's really great. And so now I'm sharing some blank music staff paper here with you. So I could be working on this with a student and we could be talking about creating the C major scale. As you can see, I'm just writing with my stylus again. If you don't have a stylus, you can use a mouse. And so perhaps I'm gonna talk about how we build that scale, tone, tone, semitone, tone, tone, tone. So I can write it in and they could see it. Then they can go ahead and screenshot this and they have their notes for their lesson right there. I also have this. I have a keyboard ready for those beginner students. And let's say we're gonna talk about skips. So I could draw right on the keyboard. As you see, I also have three keyboards on here because when I'm teaching this at home, I like to be able to have multiple keyboards to show them the difference between those skips and the steps. I'm able to show them right here and they can visually see the difference between uh, what skips look like and what steps look like. So one of the things I would recommend is that all I'm using here is, um, is images that I've downloaded and it's in my um, picture app that I can show my students. So there is a little bit of setup and preparation to do to utilize all this technology, but it's no different than what you're already doing and preparing uh, for your lessons. You may be printing off theory worksheets. Some of you have whiteboards, some of you have smart boards or blackboards, uh, and you're doing all this work anyways. So now it's just transferring some of this material over to your computer or your tablet. So that's uh, one thing you can do there. Here's another great thing that I find is really beneficial. And you can make this available. If you look at the bottom, depending on which app you're using for Zoom, whether it's iPad or your tablet or an Android, there's an option to record. And I'll just share this screen with you here. Oh, I can't do that right now. 
because it's sharing every screen I have. But if you look underneath, if you're on your tablet, sorry, if you're on your iPad, you'll see it at the top. If you're on your computer, you'll see it at the bottom. There's a record function. You can record the entire lesson or you can record certain parts of the lesson. Uh, your student could request to have something recorded so that they can play it back in their lesson, sorry, in their practice time if they wanna review something. Um, I find that really, really wonderful because look, not all students bring a recording device to their physical piano lesson. I know it's a thing that a lot of vocalists do, they record their lessons. But in my time of teaching, I've only had one student record their lesson. And that wasn't even a video recording. That was just, a, um, they brought in a digital recorder. So we can record a lesson for students and then they can watch that lesson throughout the week. Or we can highlight sometimes, I, I really, I'm gonna record how I'm gonna play this arpeggio for you. And I want you to watch my fingering and how I pass my thumb underneath my hand. And so they have that video to watch themselves. You know, one of the things the great athletes do because they always watch a video of themselves after the game, right? Wayne Gretzky did this, Kobe Bryant did this, Sidney Crosby does this. And I really do believe in recording students and showing them what they're doing that's both correct and needs refinement. So I've always asked my students to use their phones or to use their tablets and sit on the side, sorry, set it up on the side and record what they're playing. And now we can do it and they can watch us demonstrate. They can take us home and they can have us there seven days a week watching us show them how to do that fingering. Or perhaps if you're a violin teacher, you can show them how to do that bowing or a fingering. The same thing for vocal teachers, you can demonstrate proper posture. So this utilizing the record function really gives an option for students to review what goes on in their lesson. And I think that's a really, really powerful um, tool that students can take advantage and teachers can take advantage of as well. Okay, so let me just go back. Bear with me for one second as I switch some windows around. Okay, so we just talked a little about, about the screen sharing there. Um, so we talked about the students can annotate any of their shared screens. You can use a touch screen with a stylus or a mouse. Uh, the annotated screens can be saved by teacher and student. Tablet phone annotate by touching button on the bottom left hand of the screen and uh, on the computer by clicking on view options at the top of the Zoom window. Again, if any of you down the road want to um, have a personal tutorial, I can do that as well. I've done that for a number of teachers here in the Alberta region. We spent last week um, just working our ways through and showing them how to really take advantage of this wonderful tool. Okay, I just wanna talk about some studio tips especially during this time. Um, one of the things I've always advocated is that we as teachers, we must set an example for our students by practicing and learning music. One of the reasons why I practice so much is because I wanna be able to demonstrate every single thing that my students are learning. And I wanna demonstrate them fluently. I, I, would be very embarrassed if I could not play an arpeggio or I couldn't show them themes and the sonatas that they are working on. So besides all the work I do for my own career to practice and learn music, I learn every single thing my students learn. I'm gonna tell you a story. I posted this on Instagram uh, early last week. I lived in New York during 9-11. I lived in New York during the major anthrax attacks and I lived there during the blackout. And when we had a father and son <clears throat> duo who are climbing up to buildings and using a sniper rifle and shooting random people, I lived in New York during all of this time. And on 9-11, which was a Tuesday back in 2001, I was supposed to have a lesson that day, my first lesson with my teacher, Solomon Mikowski. So I got up real early, started practicing, warming up, 
I'm getting ready for my lesson. One of my friends came knocking on the practice room door in the dorm at Manhattan School and said, Derek, we have to go upstairs. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, these planes, they crashed into the World Trade Center. And so I was like, okay. So we took the elevator upstairs and we watched um, this. I was, this is hard for me because it was just so um, emotional at that time. But we watched both towers fall down and we just sat there. We didn't know what was going on. And then the school had invited all the students to the theater. We had a, a, a quick uh, session saying that classes were canceled, um, that terrorists were striking the United States. And the safest place for us to be was actually in the school. They locked us in the school. Um, my teacher found me in the hall and he looked at me. He's like, Derek, we have our first lesson today. I'm like, yes. He's like, I will see you at one o'clock. And, and I was like, but classes were canceled. He's like, I'll see you at one o'clock. So I went to his studio at one o'clock. We talked for five minutes and he, and he said, you know, today's a very crazy day. I'm like, yes, it is. And and he said, well, what, why did you come to Manhattan School? Why are you here in New York? And I said, well, I want to come study with you. And you're the person. And this is the school where I'm going to learn to be an artist. I'm going to develop my skills here. And so Dr. Murkowski said to me, he's like, OK, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how long this is going to last for. But we're going to learn today. And I'm going to teach you. And I'm gonna help you become an artist today. I'm not waiting till next week or two weeks from now or whenever this settles. I'm gonna help you right now to get to where you are. And so that really helped me out that day. And so for the next 55 minutes, we just talked about music. I played and he taught. And that was really important. At the end of the lesson, he said, this summer when you go to Spain with me, you're gonna play these pieces by Joaquin and Kumel. He gave me something to look forward to. He gave me an outlook. And I think it's really important for us as teachers. We are so important to our students that we give them an outlook. We have to give them something to look forward to. Whether it's an exam or a festival or a competition or playing that student recital. I talked to a teacher the other day. She's like, I'm not canceling my student recital until the government says I can't have my student recital. And she said, all my students are looking forward to playing that recital. And I think that's really important for us to keep that sense of normalcy for our students right now. We have to stay positive. We have to believe about improvement and about mankind and that we're going to get through this. I'm not going to talk about the negative because that's not what Dr. Murkowski did. He talked about the positive. And the most important thing is in those lessons that I had with him is that he kept me really safe. And that was really important. He kept me safe and he kept me believing that we were going to make it through. I always remind my students in their lessons, especially now, about their musical goals. I know it can be easy for them to kind of sleep in and uh, not practice when they really have more time to practice than anything. So let's just keep reminding them of what their goals are, what we set out back in September to do. We can still reach them, like I said earlier. And I don't ever ask my students if they practiced. I always ask my students what they learned and accomplished this week. Because I want them to be able to tell me what they achieved. I want them to be able to tell me which scales they practice and how much music they memorized. I know my students practice. I trust that they practice. What's more important to me to start a lesson is to know what they did so that I can go on to that next step with them. There's tons of hacks online for Zoom, this is just one of them at bustle.com. There's eight Zoom hacks to try during your next work meeting. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I saw a video the other day on Reddit. Make sure if you're going to the bathroom to turn your Zoom camera off and not bring your tablet or uh, computer with you. Because I saw uh, a video of a meeting. There must have been 12 people. One person forgot to turn off their camera and went to the bathroom and all of her colleagues saw her in the bathroom. Um, Francis Clark Center for Keyboard Piano, uh, Keyboard Pedagogy, uh, last week had a number of webinars, wonderful webinars, some um, done by my colleagues <clears throat> at the Royal Conservatory um, on online teaching by like Mario Ajero and Diana Dumblavala. Uh, they were fantastic just to watch and provided a lot of insight on this. So they're free and they're still on their 
uh, website so you can watch those if you need any more ideas. So now I'm gonna open it up to questions. And if you want to put it up in the chat window, um, that's a good place to do it and I can just read it off. So, okay, where should we start, Jennifer? Um, I just wanna say thank you to Derek. Yes. Thank you. Um, I really appreciated how kept it positive. Yeah, this is <laughs> okay, I, I see some questions here on the chat bar. So I'll just quickly do some of these. Um, Mike, see, could I do this kind of sharing with Finale? Yes, you can. You can do it on Finale, you can do it on Muse Score. Um, again, you're just screen sharing, so that's fine. Um, I'm curious about all those RCM apps I'm, he's using. Um, this is from M. Bumpus. If you want to email me, I can share more about those. But um, you can also find out about the RCM apps at rcm.com and then just look up in digital learning. Uh, I do not see a record button on my screen currently. I saw it. Yeah, you could set it up initially. Um, it's not just available on Pro, you can record on the basic uh, type of, the basic function of uh, Zoom as well. Just wondering, are the PowerPoint slides available for download today? Um, this is from Lillian. Uh, again, if you wanna email me, I can send you a copy of them, that is fine. Uh, someone here, could you record a lesson for your student and then pause? Yes, you can, you, you can pause and and start up again, that is fine. Derek, can you explain how you sent sound through YouTube videos to the student? I tried to share screen, yes. Okay, when you click share screen, you, you what you do need to have is a browser window with YouTube open, and then you would just click on that browser window. When you hit share screen as well, there's, at the bottom of share screen, the first page, it'll say share computer sound and optimize screen sharing for video clip. You have to click on both of those boxes so that you can share those YouTube videos. Okay, I'm just scrolling up, just bear with me here. Could you walk us through the exact step to connect two cameras that all happened so quickly from Karen? Um, yeah, I know you, Karen, so you can actually, while, while we have a phone call a little bit later today, and I can walk you through those steps. Colleen Branson, do you have, to have screens open before you start a meeting? Yes, I would recommend you have everything um, ready to go before, you, um, before the lesson, so everything that you would need. Again, it's no different than <clears throat> what you're doing when you're teaching and just having those resources by your side so that you can pull it up really um, quickly so that you can work with your students. Gotta be careful of those shared sounds. Yeah, I could. I guess I can turn the volume down there, Mike, sorry about that. Um, Judith Zanto is asking, 40 minutes is maximum for three or more people. Yes, that is correct for Zoom. If you have three or more people and you wanna have more than 40 minutes, you have to pay for the pro. Um, let's see. Okay, if there's any more questions, you can type it in or you can also um, stick your hand up and Jennifer can then go um, and then you can ask verbally on the video chat, so. It will actually, yeah, um, Natalia can unmute you if you raise your, raise your hand. <laughs> I teach grade five normally, so this whole hand raising thing is great. Colleen, you're unmuted, so you can uh, ask your question. Oh, okay. I was just, he said he would um, do privately for a person who, I don't remember who it was, who asked about hooking up the second camera, but I know I would like to see that as well. So I would okay. appreciate it if he went through that. And could you just go slower again? You said when you were going to share the YouTube, you said um, 
open the browser window, optimize, was it the regular sound or uh, you said t two things you had to do and I didn't write them down quick enough. Can you repeat okay, them? Sure. So let me do the YouTube first for everybody because that okay. seems like uh, interesting. Let me just go and open up a YouTube quickly for everyone. Bear with me for a second. So have a piece ready to go here on YouTube. <laughs> when you open up Zoom and share screen, sorry, um, there'll be at the bottom <clears throat> of the menu, share computer sound and optimize screen sharing for video clips. So those two have to be clicked off <clears throat> or checked, sorry. If you don't check off share computer sound, <clears throat> then the sound that comes on the end of your student is the sound that's coming through your microphone. So you could have your speaker on, but it won't be an optimized sound. So it doesn't sound that great. By making sure that you click share computer sound, it actually plays the sound on the other person's computer straight from YouTube. Um, you want to optimize screen sharing for video clip as well, so that they get a cream crisp um, version of the recording of the video that you're showing. So then I go to share screen and it has my YouTube video all ready to go and I'm doing that right now with you. And this is uh, just by Paganini and then you just hit play. And that's it. So um, that's pretty straightforward um, for doing that screen share. Now, for the second camera, there's a couple of different ways to do this. I use my iPad. And so when you hit share screen, you, there's an option there that says iPhone and iPad. And I click on that. And then it'll give me directions on what I need to do with my iPad. It tells me I have to quickly hit something called screen mirroring. And you tell me where I can find that. And then there it is, there's my iPad. Now what I can also do with my iPad with that same thing is now I've just turned on the camera on my iPad and, and that's what I'm using is the second camera is my iPad. So it's uh, really handy just to have one of these around right now. And then <clears throat> my close it, it closes the window. And it says here from Amy, where do you recommend the student to put their camera? I want to see their hands and musical face. Um, I guess you can set it up. I've had my students basically take the social distancing rule when it comes to setting up their camera. One meter, six feet away tends to work really well. And so they've had to be a little creative with um, what they can use to stand up their computer or their laptop, uh, their tablet or their phone. So some use a tripod, some just stack a bunch of piano books on a chair. Um, I had one student whose mom stood there for an hour and then she said, I gotta find something else to do next week because I can't do this for an hour because my arms are getting really tired right now. So um, if they do have a tripod, or with a clip that works really well. Um, and like I said, about a meter, six feet away, whatever that social distancing rule, that allows me to see everything from head to toe. So pedaling, um, their posture, their head, their fingers. So slight, a slight angle is good too. So you can really see the fingers. Okay, anything else? Those apps that you showed, were they embedded in Zoom? 
No, those are apps that are, Judith, those are apps on my iPad that I use. Yeah, because I was just screen sharing my iPad. Okay. Anything else? Any other hands up? Jennifer, Natalia, any other questions? I, I think um, this has been very inspiring. Um, and the reason it's been really inspiring is just because you've kept it so positive. Um, and I wanted to, <laughs> it is incredible that you um, mentioned 9-11 because I want to show you that Right behind me is a picture of, that's hard to see. Um, I have a picture of Ground Zero <laughs> in New York with the beautiful new fountain. Um, new York has some of my closest friends and I have that picture to remind me that when we are in ashes and we rise again. So your story, like I have to turn the camera off. <laughs> Um, and I think that your teacher at Manhattan was an example of routine, positivity, um, and, you know, I think that music offers us that, um, and you're just so comfortable with using these, and you've made your students feel comfortable, um, and I also think that those RCM Theory apps are looking fantastic, so... Um, everyone <clears throat> stay tuned for a second workshop on <laughs> yeah. RCM theory apps because <laughs> I think that these are pretty wonderful. Um, we have RCM senior staff with us. Elaine, did you have any words for us teachers across North America? I know we have two questions too as well. So oh, we do? Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to unmute uh, G. I don't doesn't have G doesn't have its full name. Yeah, sorry, this is Gloria. Um, Hi, I just Gloria. have a question. Hi, thanks, Derek. Um, I just had a question. When you do the second camera, Derek, um, does the sound still go through the original sound that the student hears on the first device or through the yes, second device? Uh, the second camera is just literally visual. So it's oh. still going through my computer. Um, if you want, I mean, what I played, I don't know how it sounded on your end, but I, I didn't use a microphone today. Um, and from my experience, it, it works fairly well. I do have a microphone, but I just wanted to do it without a microphone today. So yes. So okay, there, thank you. Yeah. Oh, there's a question here from uh, from Deborah Choi. I see about written work. Um, but how are you marking it? Um, <clears throat> let me just quickly do a, a quick uh, demonstration on this. Here's an example of here's some music. So um, this is actually that last score that last recording we heard of uh, Paganini and it's I just happened to have the music here because I played it two weeks ago um, so I could have all the music of my students scan onto my tablet and I could go in here and talk to them about okay I really need you to be attentive to this piano <clears throat> or let's make sure that we do a nice little crescendo at this spot so I can notate it in here. Now, in most of our lessons with our young students, we always notate in, our, in, our, in their scores. However, when I was in, you know, when I, was, I became older, I was actually doing a lot of notating myself on my own music. Uh, my teacher wasn't there to write it in. They would share teaching tips and then I would quickly go in there and write it in, right? So, um, I found that when my students would see what I'm notating in their music, and then they would go and notate it into this, their own score, that was another way to enrich their learning because they were thinking to themselves, okay, here's the crescendo. This is where it starts. This is the piano I have to go, uh, I have to introduce here. Oh, here's the fingering that I'm putting into the music at this spot. So their look, that was the learning for them. They're putting in, into their music so they're going to remember it right away and, and longer as well. So <clears throat> that works out. Now, when it comes to marking music uh, or marking homework, Deborah, what I do <clears throat> is, and I've always done this with theory, 
is because it does take some time in the lesson to mark theory. I've always had my students scan their homework and they send it to me via email. And then I just mark it. And then we talk about it in the lesson. What's nice is that <clears throat> now that they send it to me and it's on a PDF, then I can pop it up on that PDF viewer and I can show it back to them. And, and we can start <clears throat> working with the example straight from their homework that's on my screen. So that's what I would do. I just have your students email the work to you and just kind of take it, you know, we'll mark it ahead of time. So, and that will also help you to plan what you can work on with your students at the next lesson as well, knowing where their uh, strengths and weaknesses is. If you notice in their harmony, there's plenty of parallel fits, then um, it gives you a little bit of direction for that next lesson. Okay, we got to go back and review parallel motion um, in our corral. So, okay. I raised my hand. Oh, hi, Elaine. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, thank you for that, Derek. It was great. I just wanted to, I have to run to a meeting at two as well, but I wanted to mention the, uh, the RCM correct website address. It's rcmusic.com. And if you go to the website, there's all kinds of details about the apps and uh, what's available. So we have um, apps for prep through four theory, for five through eight theory. We have online courses. Uh, quite a quite a few resources and if you're a certified teacher uh, you have access to all kinds of videos and uh, Naxos library and uh, Medici TV and so on so thanks again Derek I'm going to say goodbye now and uh, that was very informative great and good luck everyone with your online teaching stay well I'm also just typing my email at the bottom of the chat. <clears throat> so if any of you would like it, you have it. And it's there. Okay, well, I believe we're all complete for today. <laughs> Colleen has one more. <laughs> Sorry, can you, I actually have a couple of questions. Can sure. you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, um, I was trying to figure out how to hang a second camera. I bought a boom, I bought a, like a mic stand, which I've never had before. I'm fairly new to this. Like I've done, I've done online teaching with my grandkids for a long time, but just using um, computer, you know, like on my phone and very simple, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, but I was trying to figure out how to hang, uh, what kind of a thing you had that, so you could angle your camera from above, you know, so they can get a shot of the keys from above too. Okay, I'll show you what I use. It's okay. not, it is not very advanced. <clears throat> okay. I'll show you. I had a couple of other questions. That's, I use a music stand. <clears throat> oh, okay, so how did they show your, it looked like it was a view from above of your keys. Um, no, it's high enough and then it's angled. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just use music because I figured um, every musician has a music stand. So. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> okay, and another I, question. My music stand is always in that position because I have violinists come over, so I just don't even move it. So I just, I just turned it, tilted it down at the keyboard, really, to be honest. Okay. All right. My next question was: You said you keep your scores, like when people, when you have uh, PDFs of one thing was which PDF viewer do you do you use? I'm fairly new to the iPad thing. I've, I've had it for a little while, but I haven't really used it a lot often. I use Drawboard PDF. Okay. And and um, does that give you like? Because then you you also said you keep your scores so you can pull them up for them. Is that in Drawboard as well? Hmm. Yeah, I scan all my stuff. Now, <clears throat> I don't scan any of the RCM stuff. I, I, if this is more for the students with the advanced level. Yeah. So what I do with, um, what I would do with <clears throat> this, um, the elementary level students is I just have the books, they're open. And then I basically just take the iPad and I point it at the music and I still can use my pencil and write something in so that they can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have all the RCM books and, and they do too, but I have a couple of students who are in, uh, a, you know, I have one adult who's in a whole ton of books and I have one little five-year-old who's in a whole ton of books because she's just going through music so crazily. And I, I don't always have, I don't have all the books she's got. Mm -hmm. you can always or, or sometimes I buy things. Sorry, go ahead. 
you know, you can ask the students to even just take a picture of that music and send it to you so right. that you can have it, right? But I was just wondering where you organize it in your, so that you can grab it on your iPad. Yeah, I just have all these folders set up, <clears throat> right? I have folders like, oh, here's my music that I'm using for performance. Here's a folder. This is Ben's music. This is Joseph's music. This is... Okay, Q and that's music. all in Drawboard? That's all in Drawboard? Well, it's in a file folder, and then I can just pull it up on Drawboard. Okay, all yeah. right. And can I ask one more question? Sure. The The specific, you when you showed the, you shared the whiteboard, or maybe it was a, it looked like a theory app where they were picking which interval it was and stuff. Yeah. Which app was that? That's the RCM music app. Okay, was it one of the like grade three? That, um, well, it's the the intervals are for level five through eight. So, okay. Yeah, it's a level. It's the interval app from the Royal Conservatory from for level. Okay. Three. I haven't I haven't used that one because. Okay. All right. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff with magnet boards and stuff, so I'll. Yes, I'll. Right. Just have to set up another camera or something so we can see it without. Yeah. Okay. I had real. I had real problems with. Uh, I just started Zoom yesterday. I've used other things before, but I, I went to Zoom because I had heard so many teachers saying it's great. You can do all the sharing and stuff. I had terrible troubles yesterday with the connection. The connections were every single student. We had to try like four times to connect, and then the sound quality was terrible. Like just terrible. Like really bad. So I'm hoping that that was just because so many people were using it. Has anybody else had that experience? Or I know Mike C had asked about latency. Um, I have not experienced any latency or lag on my end. Um, so, and I'm pretty impressed because everyone in the world seems to be on Zoom right now. So um, I, I haven't problems like that. But then I also um, have fairly, very fast high speed <clears throat> internet here um, because that's I've always I just wanted the fastest internet always so it just worked that way but um, you know it's just a matter of being patient and just trying things out right now and experimenting with it Judith asks is it better to use a desktop my laptop heats up once I turn on my camera Ooh, that's definitely not good <laughs> um, perhaps you want to I mean, if you want to move your desktop closer to your um, your instrument, or or if you're a violinist or a flautist, it doesn't make a difference. But um, that's really up to you. Um, I've tried Skype in the past. I, I noticed that Skype had a lot of lag. Um, I know, you know, WhatsApp, FaceTime. Those are all good for video, but they don't give you all of the things that I highlighted with all the screen sharing. And utilizing YouTube and theory apps and theory worksheets. So um, Zoom for me is the most powerful and the most creative and the most flexible so that what I'm already doing in my teaching studio transitions smoothly to a virtual world. I'm not creating anything. Everything is already available. It's on my laptop. It's on my tablet. And it's been a very quick transition for me. So um, that's why I would use Zoom. So, and I'm not, they're not paying me, by the way. <laughs> Zoom should pay me. I should get endorsed by these guys. So. Um, I just wanted to, to wrap us up um, as it is now 12.04 in Vancouver and 1.05 in Calgary. Um, can we give a virtual high five to Derek? Thank you. <clears throat> so I just want to wish everyone um, really good luck i am um, please 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 stay home please stay healthy um and derek has given us so many tools um i'm going to put our email at the bottom because we're going to organize another one of these within the next two weeks mm -hmm. with some different topics um so please contact us if you have any other topics you would like to cover and with that, I'm going to let Natalia adjourn our meeting. And I want to say bon chance à tout le monde et merci de votre patience. And merci de votre participation. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Derek. Yes, thank you, Derek. That was amazing. Um, I thought I knew Zoom. I do not know Zoom. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you for everybody for joining in. Um, it's wonderful to see so many people from all over not just within Canada, but I saw some in Europe and US. So thank you so much. And I can't wait for our next one. Thank you.
Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Natalia, se te apume. Natalia. Okay, I'm going to stop it now. Yeah.